Albert Okain. I was born in Accra, Ghana, West Africa, and um, was born in um, February 13, 1966. So I'm a physician assistant um, and specialize in psychiatry. You know, that was, I'm trying to think of 2019, um, I have, you know, so my wife and I have, you know, four kids and I think we still have two of their kids in our home. And our routine usually is going to, you know, the kids' events, um, you know, be it, you know, soccer um, and, you know, me and my wife are both working. And so it was, you know, typical. And, you know, on Fridays we have um, Sunan African Association have a fellowship that meets on Friday nights. And so all of those things were going on pretty normally for us. Um, so I have a son who was in college um, at that time, um, and um, the, the you know the decision was made to really send him home. <laughs> um, so things became real, you know, for me. I mean, I think it was one of the first schools. Um, my son was a student at Harvard, and I think it was one of the first schools in the country that actually decided that all the kids were going to go home, and they they had to leave with all their things. And so I remember getting a phone call and um, we were just pretty, you know, ecstatic, trying to find a way to try and get him back home um, without any real plan. So I think, and I think that was sometime in, I believe, I think it was sometime in February. And so that was probably when I felt like things were just real now. And, and so that was kind of a little alarming and the kids were coming home. Um, what are you going to do to educate them? And um, are we going to be at work? Are we going to be at home? Um, and all of those things. So there was a lot of things I was running through um, my head at the time. So yeah, it was chaos, um, you know, either in our minds, in our own life structure. Um, and then for me, you know, you know, in April, you know, um, April um, 14th, I was home um, during the clinic when I get a phone call that my father um, had passed away in Africa. And then it was much difficult because seven months later, my mother, who was very healthy, also died. Oh, so no. in 2020, we lost two parents. Oh. And, um, and a difficult thing for us is because of the pandemic, we couldn't travel. And so both mom and dad are in you know, Ghana, uh, West Africa. And so um, we had to make arrangements to bury them, but we couldn't be there. Yeah. And so for both parents, we ended up streaming the funeral and we saw it. I, mean, I, had to, I didn't go work that, and on both days. I stayed home. I woke up to wake up early in the morning and be able to watch the funeral of my mom and my dad and my mom similarly um, seven months apart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's just because, you know, there was, it didn't seem like I could give the sense of finality that I would, I would like to do um, because I wasn't there, you know. I mean, Africans have um, their um, ceremonies and things like that that we do that really is part of what, of our identity. And when you're not able to do some of those things, um, it makes it harder um, to grieve through that process. Yeah. Being part of, you know, Sunan African Association, we had to scale down what we did. And so we were not able to see ourselves as often, you know, and that was something for us that meant a lot. You know, it was our um, group of um, people that we meet with that oftentimes we were able to share common things and those things were not necessarily there. You know, my son had a long hair. I've always cut my hair myself, and so that was not a problem. I was able to keep doing that. My, my son just got a long hair. Uh, our girls have learned how to braid their hairs. You know, they've always braided their hair. My wife did it, and um, both my wife and the girls all learned how to do that. So, so something good came out of it. It saved us a lot of money. You know, by the end of the pandemic, they actually don't have to go to um, beauticians to have their hair done because now they've perfected it. That was what it was for us. For us, the fact that we were just there together, all six of us, you know, under the same roof was just exciting. It was meaningful yeah. <laughs> um, because we didn't get that chance that often, you know, once kids started going to school. Support for Facing a Changed World, an oral history of the COVID-19 pandemic, comes from the Margaret Ann Martin Everest Foundation, the Kind World Foundation, Humanities Iowa, the Friends of Siouxland Public Media, 
and listeners like you.